Okay, the last thing we did was we put in the the hole on the edge here. I probably want to make this a little bit longer, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to show how we can take this width. We need to change the width of this uh, this back piece. And then this part right here has to automatically change when that happens. So there's a couple of ways to do this. And um, one, we could take this part and we can, we can make it a, a derived part and it will actually go into this part file and use either the solid object or the parameters. Um, and the, another way to do this is using an Excel file. So you can actually have a list of the, the parameters that you want to share around different parts and, uh, and uh, use those parameters in the dimensioning. Uh, for the derived parts, I, you would use the derived technique um, really for, from what I understand now, is just for like the minimal um, uses of the measurement. So I only need to, to use this essentially a couple times because I'm going to be making another mount and I'll take that particular measurement, use it for this dimension, and use it for that other mount dimension here. So that's really the only times I'll be using it. But if it's going to be for something I'll be using many, many times, I'll be uh, using the Excel sheet uh, because I can just link that right in and use that um, for any, the, any part of the part. So let's go ahead and take this part and derive it um, into this part. So first you need to go into this part and we're gonna look for this file in the in the folder but first we have to go to manage uh, and we're gonna use the insert and derive icon so we're gonna click that we're gonna look for that part name in the in the list of files that we have I'm using uh, another project that I was uh, using before so there's, there's gonna be a lot of part files in here. But we can go take a look at the name and it's Z hyphen access back. We can just go into the list and find that particular file and click on the open. You'll probably see this the actual solid body appear in the part file. We don't want that solid body appearing in there because we don't need to see that in the in this particular part file. We just want to take a single measurement from it and uh, use that. So we're going to go into the solid bodies and we can actually turn that off. And we can go into the parameters and this is where all the parameters are are shown. In fact, you know, there the particular parameter is not um, really identifiable because it's just using the standard, um, their, only st their standard nomenclature of, of D0 through Dn. So I'm going um, to specify that in that file. So I'm going to go back out. I'm going to go to that particular file or that particular part. I'm going to go to the parameters. You can click on the parameters here or you can go to manage and click on the parameters here. And I remember that being two inches, so it must be this this particular dimension here. So I'm going to name that a different name. I'll say Z, uh, yeah, Z axis back width. Okay, press done. Okay, I can't put a hyphen in there, so let's do that again. Okay, that's good. So we'll press done. And now we will be able to identify it in the other part. So let's go back into this part. And you can see that the derived part is in the list here and this is how you can get back into the editing of the derived part so you can press the right button here edit derived part and you'll get that list again so you go to the parameters model parameters 
and the z-axis back width. All you have to do is click on this little circle here and press OK. It's telling you that um, select a non-exported object will modify the base component to mark the object for export. And you can press OK. Now it should show uh, a green uh, plus um, showing that that, that that is an exposed parameter that you can use. So press OK, and now we're, we'll be able to use that in any of the sketches that we have. So let's open up the sketch that we we created this this part, and let's go into this particular dimension, and we're going to click on the little arrow here to give a list, and you want to use the list parameters. And you can see that z-axis back width is available to use so just click on it and now when we uh, change the width of the back this will automatically change as well but you'll also notice something um, unexpected will happen so let's go ahead and see what what that is because we haven't constrained this um, to this part in any way and I don't want to yet because um, I want to constrain this part to this part and the way that it would normally be constrained in, in the real world. So let's go ahead and return and you'll see what I mean by that. You can see that it, I can move it around and I haven't constrained it to this part yet. So let's go back into this part and let's modify the width because I know that the width is going to be more than two. So I'm going to go ahead and go to that particular sketch that I created. I'm going to modify the, the dimension here. It says two inches. I, I should say two and then I N. I'm going to make it three. OK that. And you'll see that this didn't uh, change because we haven't really accepted it yet. And we may also have to use the, the update to be able to see that happen. So let's go ahead and, and this will only um, show if there's dimensions that need to be updated. So let's go ahead and click on it and you should see that wi width widen so it worked 